Hello Akron fans, and welcome to another exhibition match. This time we're going to be watching Crown Abbott vs. Ferreter, and happy Canada Day everybody! Canada Day weekend, Canada Day is actually this Monday, but doing this cast today, so we'll just celebrate it now. Now let's get the game started. The match is going to be on Tomb of Heroes. Crown Abbott is the west side of the map playing Grekum, and Ferreter is at the east side of the map. And he's also playing Grekum, and this is the experimental balance mod that has been mentioned several times before. So, big changes that are relevant. Crates are now 800 HP. Basic class units cost 30 Liquid Crystal, but are much less offensively powerful. Gate tech, or chronoporting rather, is reduced to 230 LC, 160 QP. And Octos automatically regenerate health when you get the advanced structures and weaponry upgrades. So, once we see that happening, we'll see a lot of tanky, but not particularly powerful Octos going around and doing stuff. So, Crown Abbott is setting up, probably getting his economy set up, while Ferreter is apparently doing the same, getting his early Sepian Faro up, likely building some RPs from there. Tomb of Heroes is a very large map, we've seen it many times, and it's not a map where rushing is especially well rewarded. You can get away with it, there have been some really scary proxy builds on this map, usually using the north side above the base, but it's not something that comes up terribly often, and it's certainly not just a straight up rush map. It's going to be one that it's much more of an effective tactic to try to just build up your economy and go from there, get something in the mid-game. Especially given that gate tech has has its cost reduced, that means we'll probably be seeing Corona Porting around 6 to 8 minutes in. But otherwise, it should be okay. So, well, very interesting to see what the players do with the changes. However, the changes are not, they're kind of subtle. They're not especially grandiose or anything. It's just small things, creates easier to destroy, Base class units less useful in rushes. Actually, that that as well just makes it more likely you're going to see attacks going and not really doing too much. And you're not really going to see the players going for a rush, but on this map, it does not matter. And Cranaver is defending against Ferreter's Akron at the 213 mark, and his own Akron actually getting hit and killed at the 3 minute mark. See a little pink death thing there. This is one of the things in the EXP mod is that deaths are noted in pink on the under attack bar, and research is noted in purple on the units created bar. It's a nice little handy change, and I kind of actually hope it gets into the main game, because having that death counter there is nice to see. It's nice to see that, oh hey, I have a bunch of units just die suddenly. Maybe something bad has happened. Actually, no, definitely something bad has happened. There's no suicide bomber units in this game. So that was would not be intentional. And see that Ferreter small scouting Octo, not doing too much damage, but is Akron is doing a lot of scouting. That Octo is likely to be retreated. I mean, might have been going for small harassment, but Kron Aberrant on the ball with his defense. Octo is patrolling around and able to take care of everything Ferreter has pushing at him. Ferreter, on the other hand, is focused more on the economy and getting an early Octopod for his defense rather than a pair of Octos. Not a bad idea. So Kron Aberrant is continuing to defend. Both players are actually very near the present. Neither of them using the pass too much at this point, and Cronabrant surprisingly not building. Well, okay, now he has enough the crystal to build more RPs, but I think he might have been a bit distracted in what he was trying to do. And he appears to be trying to still force out that Akron, doing what damage it can, but the Autos and the Akron are about the same speed. But I think they might be exactly the same speed. So it's very difficult for the Autos to catch up. He's trying to micro it around, trying to just close it off, trying to intercept, but it's not doing too well. That Akron is still getting hit. Building up an Octo for Progen mode, that'll probably be used to get a, a Sepi or two for Reefs for Bubble Wrap. And the Akron has been forced out. Ferreter running it away, while at the same time, Cronamer's Akron moving it from the south again, but Ferreter has his Octopod going, and that will be more than enough to stop the Akron from coming in. There's nothing that can really be done to deal with that. And Cronamer, is he going to build an Octo? No, he's, he is building those Sepi Pods. He's not building an Octopod. Sorry, Sepi Pods. Sepis. He's building Sepis. The Octopod not being built. Just going for Sepis. He's going for Reefs, most likely in five seconds at most. And, yeah, it's, Crown Aberrant did mention to me, because this version of the Experimental Balance Patch, or Experimental Balance Mod, is not actually been released publicly yet. It's still kind of a work in progress, but Crown Aberrant wanted me to cast these games, or at least cast this game, and that is what I'm doing. And he gave me a partial change log telling me what was going on, because I have no idea. I mean, I could go through the XML and figure out what he's changed, but that would take a while, and... He was kind enough to not force me to do that. So thank you, Crown Aberrant, for letting me know what was going on. And speaking of base class units, more than coming up. Faro as well coming up. Looks like 
possibly a... No, not a second try. Just two Reese, and this will be a Spire fairly soon. Cranhammer being forced out. No scouting going on there. And a couple of his Oshnas over coming in, chasing after that Akron. Continue to chase after from his own base. Not letting that Akron go without a fight. And it will be going into a fight inside of Ferreter's base, which Ferreter will win. Ferreter having this Oxbot here... Complete trump card, there's no way the Octos can really get through and deal enough damage to actually deal with that Octopod. Cryonavar doesn't even have his Reef. Where is Cryonavar's Reef? I he might have got he must have gotten distracted, because I do not see that Reef there. It's a little bit annoying, actually. Oh, wait, there's a small build order. Nope, that's another Seppi. A Reef may be forthcoming, but it looks like... Is he going for, he is he going for a proxy? That that Reef is going up toward... That That looks like a proxy. I think Cryonavar is doing a proxy right now. Don't see a Faro, though. I just see the... No, there's the Faro. And another Faro as well. So he might be going for a Reef and a Spire inside the base just to avert suspicion. But going for a Faro, Seppi pair north of Ferreter's base, meaning that Ferreter will have to worry about this. I'm not sure if Ferreter's at all aware of what might be happening, but he's certainly going to be soon enough, but it may not be soon enough for him. Octo's going towards the south side. Not sure if is going to attack with those. Would be unwise to do so. Best just to keep him around here and hang out. Maybe use one of them to turn to an RP, actually. Just proxy RP, steal some of the LC here. I mean, Ferret is not likely to expand there for the next two or three minutes, at least, and possibly more. And Ferret are actually doing the same thing. Both players are scouting out, making sure that they know what happens, know if their opponent is going for a little well, expansion. Nice choice, I like that. And... Oh... Okay, well, there's that Seppi, and that Seppi actually being spotted by Ferreter Seppi. Ferreter looked like he was building a reef over in the north side of the map. And where is that damage being done? Oh, 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 wow. Ferreter is... Ferreter is actually destroying Cronhammer's potential expansion. Not even just scouting it out. He's just getting rid of it completely. While Cronhammer jumping around the three-minute mark... No, he is actually... He is doing this. So from his point of view, he is also destroying this expansion. So both players... Are tearing apart the expansion. Cybernetic Pony style has apparently become very popular. And Faro going around trying to scout this out, but it's way too late. Unable to save the expansion that would have been there. Able to hit that Octo. No! What? That should have been able to see the Octo. That was bizarre. We jumped back about five seconds before that happened, but that Faro should have seen the Octo. And it didn't. So the Octo has free reign to destroy the expansion, and these two do not! Cronaver's Octos are being destroyed by Ferreter's Octopod. Ferreter on the ball defending this and keeping one of his LC crates in the expansion. Not both, but Cronenbert losing all of his crates in his own expansion. So Cronenbert unfortunately losing that. And where is... What is going on on the north side of the map? There's a Seppi over here, but it's not apparently doing anything. Like I said, Ferreter did spot what was going on. This Seppi is doing its own thing as well. Like I said, it is building... Not a reef, a mound. Oh, right. Mounds are also cloaking. That was the last change that came up. Mounds cloak when they're built. They auto-cloak and they're permanently cloaked. So that's probably what both players are doing, is building a mound just to get basically a nice view on their opponent's base. Because mounds have a very large range. And a mound right here, right about here, will be able to see the entire base. Or just about. Everything that's relevant right now, at least. And both players continue to build their economy. Cryonaurant less so than Ferreter. Ferreter actually looks like he's quite a ways ahead in terms of economy. See, he has six... Six LCRPs, two QPRPs. Well, Crimeamer has. Oh, never mind. Crimeamer's just one QPRP behind. It's actually not that bad. But he does have fewer crates that he can expand to. That is bad. And actually, is that that? Yeah, I think the re relatively unknown mechanic of heavily damaged crates will leak resources. This is pretty much completely unknown. I think I only know about it because I read through some of the XML files. But yeah, if you notice, this is leaking liquid crystal. Heavily damaged crates, I think it's 150 HP is the threshold, but I'm not sure, will leak resources. This has never come up before in a casted game. Or if it has, it was extremely subtle and never really came. It's A crate is usually completely damaged, or completely destroyed, or basically undamaged. But yeah, that happens. So this crate is going to run out of resources eventually. That... I'm kind of surprised that it's not come up. I'm kind of happy that I looked at the XML and noticed that, or looked at the OCS file and just noticed that at one point, because, like I said, that's a very unknown mechanic. Now, to be fair, Cronamorant's QP, it looks like the QP crate is not damaged enough to start leaking resources, but this LC crate in 
Ferritor's expansion certainly is, and has been for a little while now. However, Ferritor doesn't really care. He's got his main base built up quite well. He has a Farabod coming up, and he could very easily actually get Gate to any time now if he wants to. Once he, if he moves some of his RPs over to QP, probably two or three on QP, should be able to get enough to get Gate Tech right now. And Cronaberin getting advanced structures as well. Cronaberin. Let, even less will set up for getting Gate Tech. He has fewer QPRPs. Has not actually changed that at all. All these Arctos still just staying as Arctos. Not as he's very focused on base class defense. While Ferritor is very focused on building himself up, teching up, and at the nine minute mark he might be getting Gate Tech. I he was definitely further in the future. He's not getting it though. We don't see any purple bar on his little timeline. We don't see one for Cron Aberrant as well. He doesn't have Gate Tech yet. He does have obviously we see one for advanced structures. Which has not been used. No Faro being built up, but Cronenberg going for a small assault towards the expansion. Will not find anything there except for a slowly leaking crate. But he will find a pretty good path into Ferritor's base. And Ferritor does have a nice eye on him. Actually, I was wrong about that. Mountain. The mountain range isn't as large as I thought. Even right here is barely enough to see everything. So he's able to see the spire, though. That's very important. That's the big thing to see. The Faropod going towards the north looks like Ferritor might just be trying to destroy the expansion over here, possibly take it, but most likely destroy it. If there was a Sepi Pod along with that, he would be taking it, build an Octoligo, split that down to Sepi and Faro, and use that to spawn a bunch of Octos. Not a bad idea, and Ferritor does have the money to do that. It doesn't seem to be his goal, however. He's... Mind you, if he does that, that'd be really neat. You'd need Legal Class to do it, but he does have the money to get that, and Legal Class is a 10 second research. So it's not going to be something that's prohibitive to get. But no, he's going for another Faropod. And just scouting around, making sure that Cronomer has not expanded, which he has not. However, Cronomer is getting a bit more QP. In fact, Cronomer is ahead of Q-Plasma. Ferritor has not gotten a single extra Q-Plasma RP, but Cronomer is getting more Q-Plasma. So Cronomer appears to be quite keen on getting himself some Gate Tech. However, Ferritor also seems to be quite keen on harassing them to avoid Cronomer getting Gate Tech, and that would be very wise to do. However, it doesn't matter. This is a bad timing to do that. These Seppies are perfectly able to see the Farapod and quite able to destroy it. And down it goes. That Farapod trying to escape Scout over, see if it can find anything else interesting going on. And yes, it can, but not anything it can destroy easily. Seppi getting healed up by the Reef enough. However, at the same time, Octos are destroying these crates here. Cronomer getting his vengeance on these crates in the south side of the map, but losing stuff in the process. He actually... He lost a unit there, or, or had lost a unit. Ferret, on the other hand, having... Well, he had one of his Ferret Pods possibly dying, but it didn't actually end up dying. He does have a Octo down here as well. Just double check, make sure that nothing tricky is going on, and destroying the RP that was here... Sorry, the crate that was here. Because there was normally a Liquid Crystal crate, just like on the right side of the map here. But that's been destroyed. Both players very heavily invested in crate destruction. And Sebi Pod's coming up now to help with the Ferret Pods. The Ferret Pod over to the north. I think Ferritor is in fact going for legal class and going into splitting down an Octoligo in the north side to take that over. He does have the money for it, he does have the Sipipod coming up, he has a Sparapod just... No, it's not just hanging out, it is moving away. It's scouting differently, double checking to make sure that there really isn't anything there at the 10 minute mark. And there isn't, absolutely nothing. Crown we're moving north and this is going to be a very powerful attack. There isn't a whole lot set up to defending against this. The Sepi Pods won't be especially effective. The Farapod will be fairly effective. I think the Sepi Pod attack mechanic may have changed, I'm not sure exactly how. Might have just a change in its rate of fire. I know Cronomer wanted to do some changes to Sepi Pods and Sepi Ligo. Sepi Ligo got a big change involving making the damage increase as it attacks, kind of like the Void Ray in StarCraft 2. I'm not sure if that's in this patch, though. And both players are losing quite a few units, but it looks like Ferritor managed to defend against him well enough, getting enough base class units to defend against the incoming force. However, these Octopods still dealing quite a bit of damage, and the Sepi's will stop any Aryans to try to come back to stop this. The Reef still being destroyed, Cronomer actually able to deal quite a bit of damage. This is from Ferritor's point of view, by the way, this is further in the past. Ferritor losing that Reef, losing another unit pretty soon, this Octopod most likely, and continuing to lose units regularly, while Cronomer, after that giant wave of death, only starts losing units after dealing enough damage on this base for it to be worthwhile. And now at the same time, Cronomer is building up more units, streaming them towards the southwest ex central expansion, where Ferritor has not actually scouted at all. Ferritor is not at all aware of this, hasn't damaged it at all. He's therefore not really done anything effective when it comes to stopping our expansions at this point in the game. And there we go, Cronomer's actually losing some of his units, pushing them a bit too far forward. One of the same pods going down, however, and a lot of RP is going down. Now Ferritor, on the other hand, is... Is that the present? But not what I wanted to look at. Ferritor, on the other hand, is... 
killing... Or no, he's losing quite a few units of his own. This assault is doing a lot of damage. Cronhammer is doing quite well here, but I think Ferreter's got something up his sleeve. His far pods might be what he has up his sleeve. He's moving them forward, in fact, and getting rid of the Seppies without too much issue. These Octopods are unable to... Well, it would be unable to stop the far pod if it decided to cloak. It did not, but still this Octopod able to destroy yet another RP. And another Octopod coming in and defending us. So it will be able to be completely matured before it dies, and it will finish off the Octopod coming in. So Crown Emirate managing to get rid of a Reef and a good two or three RPs. Not bad, though. Ferreter has so much... LC in the bank, it doesn't matter. It's so much like Crystal that he can just... He can lose those RPs. He can rebuild them if he wants to. Chronomart, however, getting ahead in Q Plasma and hasn't built... He hasn't built Chronoporting yet. Or any sizable army. I think he got distracted by his attack. Because he needs to use those resources. He has tons in the bank. I I'm guessing he's planning on getting a bunch of pod class units, maybe a Spire, and then going from there... And... Oh, shit. Oh, okay, uh, sorry. I... Okay, apparently this replay actually is not playing back correctly. Yeah, Cronhammer is reporting that this replay is not correct, which, frankly, is not totally surprising. Honestly, this is experimental stuff. This is not stock, not stock anything, not stock maps, not stock OCS, which is a big deal. So it, there could very well be issues there. And, okay, I apologize for that. I... That's unfortunate. Well, sorry about that, guys. Kind of wish I'd actually been what the match was, because these players look like they were doing stuff that they should have been doing that they aren't. Oh, well. Hope you enjoyed that anyway, and I guess I will sign off for now. Have a good night, everyone.